Hi, I'm Don Morris, Morris Group International. I've been here over 50 years. My dad before me was here 49 years. And my children are involved in the business. Uh, we've had generations of families working with us, multi-generations. We're a private-held company. High level of integrity, uh, honesty, those are, those are just virtues that we, we have. The other side is we're very entrepreneurial and we're very um, spirited. We like to do our own thing. We like to invent stuff, we like to sell stuff, we like to make our own stuff. You know, many companies today buy and resell somebody else's products. You won't find that at Morris Group. We make our own stuff. People always ask me, um, how do you come up with ideas for um, R&D? How do you know where to put your money? <laughs> I wish I had could answer that question. Half of it's trial and error. You get an idea, you kind of run with it, and sometimes it works and sometimes completely bombs out. So I think what keeps the ideas coming is talk to a lot of people and listen and not only talk, but listen to their ideas, uh, read a lot, watch the trends, and then think about what people need. We pivoted during the virus to hand washing. Hand washing became a big thing. We were all told, wash your hands as many times a day as you can. And so sensor faucets, hand washing became a huge uh, issue. We were told, don't use bubblers on water coolers because they're bad. So we pivoted and, and did more bottle fillers. So I think the, the market, the environment, the you know, just keep your eyes and ears open and look for opportunities within your niche. So I realized that most of our success has come out of products that we add uniqueness and something different to the marketplace. If we try to make somebody else's product like they make the product and you try to make it cheaper, I call it race to the bottom. I want products that bring value added to the customer. Whether the customer is a sprinkler contractor, a plumbing contractor, it's a labor-saving device, saves him labor, it's quicker, it's easier to go in, it's longevity for the engineer. The engineer is very important, he's specifying our products. I wanna make sure when he specifies a J.R. Smith product that that product will go in the ground and it'll be there for decades and he won't have any problem with it. And he doesn't get any callbacks, he doesn't get any warranty issues. And that's, that's been our foundation, you know, but there's no substitute for quality is, is, our, is our original tagline with that. Still there today. Uh, but I realized that we need to get into some bigger businesses, that I can't keep growing at the pace we're growing. We've done some of it through acquisitions. We've acquired three or four fire companies in the last 15 years, and that's, that's given us a tremendous growth in the fire division hospital divisions, new products, acquisition, a little bit, mostly new products coming out of our heads. And then the, the big one now is that I need somewhere to go. I'm a bow weevil. So this bow weevil has no patience. We established that and I want to go somewhere. Right now I'm going to tell everybody we're launching into, and we've already been several years in, we're going to launch in a full line of regulators. So we're going into the regulator business and I've got a consultant working for me and the team, not for me. Nobody works for me, they work for the company. Um, I don't like people working for me. I, I like them working for the company. Brad Knowles, a um, very knowledgeable person in the regulator backflow business, um, is a consultant with me and has been for several years. And Brad has a tremendous background in backflow and regulators. So we're going into both of those businesses. The regulator business will be launching third quarter this year. Jim Graves in our Chicago Innovation Center is responsible for the launch of the regulator business, Jim and his team. So we've done a lot of engineering, we've done a lot of sourcing, and we'll have a full line of pressure regulators. It will be launched under two of our core brand names. So it will be launched under J.R. Smith and it will be launched under Acorn. So it will be uh, Acorn regulators and J.R. Smith regulators. Uh, it will be stocked in Montgomery. Uh, it will be stocked in industry. And, you know, that's, it's a commodity type business. So it has to be on the shelf, has to be available, and has to be competitive. Supply chain issues may slow it down a little bit. Second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. 
I want to do it right. I want to make sure when it's launched, we have it in stock, we have it in MDC, IDC, we have the Golden Triangle working. Then Casey Hayes is VP in charge of the Backflow product line. The second and more complex product line is the Backflow. Uh, there's currently five, six competitors in that, that area, but they're only owned by two, three companies. Um, and that product line um, will not be out for several years. The designs are pretty well done. The uh, innovation lab is done. Um, the testing's been done, but we have approval process and those, that industry is a long approval process, several year approval process. And that's a couple year timeline. So don't expect the backflow business that you're gonna order from us anything in backflows for at least two more years, two, two and a half years. This is what I call the golden triangle behind me here. This is where our future is. Today, you have to have products available quickly. You've gotta be able to ship them off the shelf quickly. You've gotta have good quality products. And you've gotta have products that aren't sitting on a boat coming from Asia somewhere. And we're perfect for that. Morris Group has grown like a weed the last couple years because we've innovated a lot of new products, a lot of new divisions, and then now we're, we're enhancing our service levels even further. So now that we're 100% ownership of J.R. Smith, we've expanded our Montgomery Distribution Center. It's already manufacturing a lot of their own products but now it's enhancing more of our warehousing into Montgomery. We've got 26 acres there. We've got plenty of uh, space to expand. Geographically, Montgomery's in a perfect position to service the Midwest and the Eastern regions, the Southern regions. It's a great location, great labor base. We've been there for 45 years. It's fabulous. The higher run, higher volume for all of our divisions is in Mexico. So F&M in Mexico was founded 34 years ago. We have our own manufacturing facility. We own our own land, our own buildings. We've got two large facilities there, about 750 people. Between Montgomery Manufacturing, City of Industry Manufacturing, and uh, Mexico, we're pretty much redundant with three manufacturing sites. So we have lasers, we have draw presses, we have robotic welding. We have all those in all the three facilities. So if we were to have a, a, a catastrophe, an earthquake in Southern California, um, we have redundant plants. I'm not telling you it would be easy, but we would stay in business. Our junk's not on a ship out in the harbor, LA Harbor, we make it. So this to me is the most important thing going forward. If we're gonna continue to grow the company, I wanna enhance the Golden Triangle. We're expanding Mexico, we're expanding Montgomery, we're expanding city of industry. So part of the, this golden triangle is the quick ship program we're coming out with. That means that you're probably gonna get a truck out of Montgomery. We're gonna feed trucks out of Montgomery to almost everybody. The California market will probably be fed out of industry. Almost everybody else in the nation will be fed out of Montgomery. So products go from Mexico to Montgomery, Montgomery out to almost over 60 distribution centers in North America. That work, we call it the quick ship program. So more product into Montgomery, more product on the shelf in the industry, ship quickly out of one of the hub. So I'll bet you a lot of people are wondering, what are these numbers? So look at the number on top, 1,890. So oh, you'd think 1890s, the time that we started something? No, we have a division older than that. We have Murdoch's 1853. So no, that's not it. Look at number one down there. Number one's my dad. So he started with no employees. He had an entrepreneurial spirit. He wanted to build his own company. In the beginning, he called it Earl Morris Company. Today, it's called Elmco, founded in the late 40s. And then dad, kept growing the business. I came in with dad out of college. I think he had about 30 employees, 40 employees. He'd gone up to 100, back down to 30. Dad and I together took the thing up to around 1,000. Dad checked out at 90 years old, working every day. He didn't retire, working every day at 90, and we hit around 1,000 employees. Now, I've had the pleasure of building a little higher on dad's foundation. 
and I've got my children, three of my children in the business with me, and we've taken it to almost 2,000 employees. Guess what? The ceiling's pretty high there. I think before I check out, we're gonna, we're gonna test the ceiling. That's my goal, okay? Stay private, uh, stay entrepreneurial, and uh, have fun. So on the triangles, we talked about the growth of the company, but I wanna see it continue to grow. Part of that's succession planning. You have to have succession planning, especially when you're in a private held company. You know, as long as I'm alive, and I think as long as my children are alive, this company will stay private held. Uh, we're not private equity. We're not a stock company. We're not listed on New York Stock Exchange. We're private. We're entrepreneurial, as I said earlier. We have a lot of spirit. That was ingrained in me with my father there. And obviously, I've got the same spirit, very similar to my dad. And I'm really fortunate to have three of my five children in the business with me. These three combined have 70 years experience in our various companies. Yeah, I'm fortunate. A lot of dads don't get uh, their kids in the business and the companies die. So, you know, we're not dying, we're going forward. And beyond them, I have a, another child at home and he wants to be the CEO 2040. But I told him, well, you better get out of second grade first because you can't be the CEO till you get out of second grade. So I want to talk first about Kristen. Kristen will be made president of the Whitehall division. It's a growing division. It's got best care. It's got some beautiful products. So we're going to see Whitehall continue to just move and help build those triangles to the roof. Randall heads up Elmdor and our fire divisions. Fire divisions are Potteromer, Croker, Fire Pro, Larson, and then of course, as I said, he heads up Elmdor. So he's got five divisions. He's gonna be president of what I call the fire divisions. Not last, but the youngest is Barrett. I wanna announce here that Barrett is gonna be the president of Acorn and J.R. Smith. Uh, there's been a change at the J.R. Smith division. For the last 11 years, I've had the pleasure of being the CEO of J.R. Smith. We've done some real neat things, and I had two partners. They were Holly and Debbie Smith, and we grew up together, and we stayed friends together, like, like our fathers before us. I've had the pleasure the last 10 years of working with uh, Debbie and Holly. I've been the CEO of J.R. Smith, but we made a change the change is, is that they are no longer with the business and uh, Morris Group uh, owns 100% of J.R. Smith. So I've announced some changes here. Kristen, the president of Whitehall, uh, Randall, president of the fire divisions, and Barrett, president of our two larger divisions, Acorn and J.R. Smith. I think we're gonna take those triangles to the roof. That's the goal. Here we are in the conference room. Uh, I kind of want to summarize what we saw today. What you saw is a family that's uh, been dedicated to Morris Group from the very beginning with my father, myself, my brother, my children, um, hopefully my grandkids come into business. I mean, that's a family held business. That's what we are. And on the cover of the video uh, presentation, you see a dinosaur. Our legacy is not extinction. Our legacy is growth prosperity, and have some damn fun. So the last couple years have been challenging for everybody. They've been very productive for Morris Group and me personally, because I wasn't traveling, I was home a lot. And um, we developed a lot of new products at Morris Group, hand washing, a whole lot of new products. But beyond that, I had another job. So my wife Mimi was asked to um, go on Bling Empire, which is a Netflix series. And guess what? We have a new career in Hollywood. We had a bet last couple yeah. years. Last year he didn't win, he lost. And he just missed it by a hair. We have a target, uh, a sales target. This year he won. And the bet was when he wins, he gets to drive the Lambo and I'm not around. He gets to go do what he wants to do. So he's earned the privilege, All right, my, my friend. When do I gotta bring it back? Well, just don't bring it back damaged. <laughs> <laughs> he's in. <laughs> Thank you.
Go have fun. Thank you. That that was that was fun. And what I do as a dad is I don't try to push the children into something they don't want to do. I mean, if you don't love what you're doing, you shouldn't do it. There's enough opportunities in the United States here to do what the heck you want. You shouldn't have to push people into a direction. I've been successful as a father uh, with my children. I, I'm really proud of um, all my children. And you know, in life, you what it, you know, you go through life. You have fun. You, you drive fancy cars. You do all that. But what do you leave behind? Well, what I leave behind is the same thing my dad left behind: some really good human beings that are going to add value to the world. You know, at this juncture in my life, people ask, why do you want to do uh, things like you do? You could retire, you could, you know, and that's kind of where I'm at. I, I love my family. I love my work. I like the people I work with. I love the people I work with. I love the stimulation. And as long as I can get stimulated, I'm going to keep just going forward. We don't own our people. <laughs> our people are, I don't have anybody under contract. I don't know of anybody in the 2000s under any contract. I don't believe in contracts. If they want to quit, quit. If you want to work, work. Somebody treats us with respect and we treat them with respect. You don't need a contract. You never have to look at it again. And the same thing with employees. If you're doing something wrong, they're going to leave. And they should leave. If you're doing it right, then they'll stay. You'll find out if you're doing it right, because if you're not doing it right, you start losing all your troops. You can't go in a war with no troops, so you need troops. That's part of the game. On the cover of the video presentation, you see a dinosaur. Our legacy is not extinction. Our legacy is growth, prosperity, and have some damn fun.